on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I'm Ben Hall. Hope you just watched the mayoral debate. It was just live on News Channel 5 Plus and News Channel 5. And that's what we are going to talk about right now. Happy to have with me Larry Woods, a Politico debate expert. Larry, thank you for being here. I'm excited to be here. I watched it. It was very interesting. No, it's great. It's a first televised debate of this campaign. Um, this campaign has been fascinating in that in, I think in some past campaigns, there were a lot of commercials on the air by this point. There was a lot of talk. This campaign's kind of sneaking up on people. And so this was a real chance to see the candidates answer some some detailed questions and kind of see where they stand. What was your thought? I, I agree with the nature of what you were just saying. There haven't been that many political ads on television and in the media, quite a bit of social media, but the actual television not. So for a lot of the folks in Nashville, tonight was the first opportunity to see Briley, Cooper, Clemens, Swain, and, and make a reaction and a judgment and uh, yeah, I thought all four of them did very, very well in the debates. Nobody melted down. Nobody made any uh, heart-stopping mistakes. Uh, and I wanted to be sure and emphasize I thought they did well because I've got dozens of things <laughs> I want to talk about where I'm scratching my head when they're talking, saying, why are you saying that instead of this? Why don't you tell us about your biography? For example, Swain did that. She did. And yeah. I think uh, a lot of people who heard Candidate Swain give her biography and how tough she grew up and succeeded are going to be very impressed by that. I think Mr. Briley, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Clemens could have introduced similar biographical personal stories, not the same, but uh, and and people want to know that. Who am I voting for? So I'm, I'm really surprised that the other candidates did not give us the biography. Yeah, you can get it on the website, but I'm lazy. I'm sitting there in front of the TV. I'm not going to, my 20-year-old my will go look it up while they sit there. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I expected for the first televised debate to hear it a little more biography from each one of that them. That was a bit of a moment when she did talk about, I think she said at 16 she dropped out of school, but she's a Vanderbilt professor who right. has had a great deal of success, had three kids at a very young age. Yeah, that was interesting to hear that. The other question I would have is, I don't know if this was conducive toward a lot of fighting or attacking, that kind of thing. There wasn't a lot of that. No, there wasn't. Now, it looked like Briley at one point was kind of going after Cooper a little Early bit. Early on, that's exactly right. But after he criticized Cooper directly once or twice in the early stages, uh, he backed off that or stopped doing it. Uh, Clemens criticized Briley fairly directly later in the debate. But, but I'm really surprised there wasn't more of that. You know, if if I run a campaign or I run for office and I go negative against my opponent Ben Hall and run television ads saying, oh, he's a terrible guy, I'm, you know, I, the uh, creator, producer of those bad ads, I'm going to suffer. People are going to say, well, why is Woods going negative? That's not what he should do. So if you're a candidate for mayor in this group of four and you want to tell critical things about your opponents, this is one of your few opportunities. If I turn around on that stage standing three feet away from you, Ben, and say, now, Ben, you know you shouldn't have voted for X and Y and Z, and Ben, you know you should have done this and that, you can respond to me. Nobody's going to think I'm being engaging in negative ads if I face-to-face -face say to you, this wasn't right or this was done wrong. That's legitimate back and forth that every candidate gets involved in. So if I'm not the incumbent, if I'm anybody but Briley tonight, here's my opportunity to really go after Mayor Briley or one of the other candidates mm -hmm. if I think that's worth doing. And there was very, very little of that. I think, I think the governor's election this year might have influenced the campaign thinking where we saw Diane Black uh, and one of the other candidates just go negative the whole campaign. And, and what happens is typical of a multi-candidate election. She suffered for it. So did the Knoxville candidate who responded in kind. And Governor Lee benefited because he didn't go negative. But it's different when you're face-to-face -face on a platform stage presence, that is about the only time the voters will accept 
Yeah, let's hear a real argument here, because notice many times tonight, essentially all four candidates said the same thing. Right. Now, now there's some right. big issues where they didn't, but otherwise there was a lot of agreement tonight. Briley said he called Cooper a Williamson County developer. Yes. And he should have <laughs> proposed a budget. He didn't lead. And, and so... I thought that might be the beginning. Maybe we'll see that later on. He, he developer, because certainly what uh, Cooper has been talking about is have other parts of the city expand. Development needs to go out to all parts of the county. And it's interesting that he would call him a Williamson County developer. Yeah, it, it really is fascinating because generally most electric calling someone a developer is a very negative critical <laughs> statement. But John Cooper has sort of been using that as part of his campaign message. He's been uh, putting in his campaign rhetoric material that I've been a successful developer, I've been a successful financial analyst, I've been somebody, I am somebody that understands budgets and finances, and that's why I could do a better job as mayor, save the city money, and therefore make re more resources available for our children, our schools, etc. So for Briley to attack Cooper for being a developer, I don't think anybody counts being Williamson County as negative, maybe, but <laughs> for Briley to attack him for being a developer sort of plays into Cooper's strategy. Now, having said all that, and I haven't seen the polling, so I don't know, I, I'm not sure Cooper's strategy of talking about I've been a developer and I understand developers really gets him a lot of votes. Mm -hmm. um, He's, he didn't really respond harshly but he said I want to put my business sense to use something to that effect right. and as I said a minute ago that would have been the perfect opportunity for Cooper to say let me tell you about my business background I did this I did that I worked hard on this I accomplished this but he just skipped right over it. and I'm sure that friends of Mr. Cooper and people know well already know that background but for the other 95% of everybody watching and listening tonight, they don't know the background. Now, of course, maybe he wants people to think he's Congressman Jim Cooper and pick up the votes from the very popular Democratic congressman we have, uh, since they are brothers. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there is some kind of that confusion. No, I don't really think John <laughs> Cooper's trying to do that. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure what the strategy is there. So what I want to do is just open it up. You know, I want people to call in. If you watch the debate, what were your thoughts? There's the number at the bottom of the screen, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. And before I take the calls, just a couple more broad sort of thoughts from you, Larry. I mean, good, bad, just some, some basic thoughts. You, you, you say you think everybody did well enough. Yes. Uh, nobody melted down. And, and everybody had high points at, at different times. For example, uh, as you and I talked about very briefly before we went on the air, the audience was not supposed to applaud. But in fact, twice there was applause. Once for Clemens, when he was criticizing Mayor Briley's position on scooters, and once for Mayor Briley, when he was talking about it, where he would take family and friends visiting town and talk about the Parthenon and the African American Music Museum, each of them got you know, pretty uh, generous applause at those points. So everybody had high points, uh, all four of them did. At the same time, I would level the criticism. People vote on their emotions. I'm going to vote for him because I like him, or her because I like her. Uh, wow, that was a great answer, full of energy and enthusiasm. Notice what I haven't talked about is policy, which is what the four of them wanted to talk about today. Right. And I'm for encouraging that. We need to make decisions based on policy. But if you want to win the election, you better be saying and acting in ways that rouse people's emotions. I wanted one of them to pound on the podium and say, Nashville's been headed in the wrong direction. We spent $400 million that we could have put into the schools, got nothing for it, and raised their voice some. Uh, that's human nature. Mm -hmm. And I think people, I know voters respond to that, and none of the four were really giving us any emotional appeals tonight, unless you count Ms. Swain talking about her personal biography. That was, I think, an emotional moment uh, for her and her supporters. Very interesting. All right, so we're going to take a break. Uh, opening up the lines. If you're on the line, hold on. We'll get to your call. There's a number if you want to call in, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.